The next crop I want to talk about in the cool season uh, blooming plants is the Cineraria. And it's part of the same group of plants uh, as an alternative for energy saving. Cineraria uh, is native to the Canary Islands. It's a biennial, uh, it's, but we grow it as an annual. It's got a cropping cycle of five to six months. Again, this is a, there's two groups. There's a grandiflora and multiflora with the different flower sizes. It's propagated from seed. Uh, it requires uh, light in the germination chamber. It's got to have light to germinate. Um, germination is kind of slow, 10 to 14 days. And most people will transplant it when the seedlings get crowded into a small or final container. But it's also uh, commonly grown as a plug plant from specialty propagators. It's a full sun plant. Um, you may add some supplemental light to speed flowering, temperature 65 to 68. And at that point, when the plants, when the roots reach the edge of the pot, we're going to give it a cold treatment. Okay, it's a vernalization treatment. We're going to lower the temperature to 50 to 59. So it's not really cold, but it's cold enough to start the vernalization process. After the vernalization, a high temperature will, will do a quick, quick flower, but a poor plant quality, keeping the temperature low, is going to give us a better plant. And this plant is very is susceptible to almost every foliar disease you can imagine, so we need to keep the humidity very low. Evenly moist, um, it's got tender roots, so we want to keep the plant uniformly moist. Um, high levels of nitrogen, if we overfeed it, it's going to be very soft and succulent. Uh, a lot of times we don't use a nutrient starter charge in our, we want to have a potting soil that's nutrient free to get it established. Then we're going to start it off at 100 parts per million uh, from nitrogen and potassium uh, during the first early production cycle. And then later we're going to alternate it every other watering with 200 parts per million. This is a, another plant that if we let the pH get too high of a potting soil, we're going to have iron deficiency, but you can fix that with a little iron supplement. A lot of growers do use uh, growth retardants on this, especially when uh, it's um, grown in a cloudy season. Um, a lot of growers will do this, but they're going to assume that they're going to give a little bit of a flowering delay. Uh, very susceptible to our, our soil-borne microorganisms like Pythium and Rhizoctonia. And um, th we s specifically see this more than anything else if we plant our plugs deep. So you want to plant them on the high. Both cyclamen and Cineraria are very, very attracted, or, or high attractant for aphids and whiteflies. If you're going to get aphids and whiteflies in your greenhouse, they'll be on these plants first. Some growers actually use these as indicator species if a problem, because you'll find aphids on this plant before you'll find it on anything else. And so what a lot of growers will do is automatically start using a product like uh, some of the uh, neonicotinoids as a, as a drench, like uh, Marathon or Merit, which is um, imatoclopred. And uh, these are very non-toxic, non-mammalian non toxicity pesticides, <coughs> but they keep the uh, aphids under control. Flower induction treatment is below 59. 43 to 50 is optimum, so they'll just drop the temperature in a whole greenhouse during the induction period. Um, some cultivars are out there that have no flower, uh, no cold treatment requirement, but they're typically have more foliage. Uh, photo period doesn't have any influence, but long days will promote development from visible bud to flowering. In other words, the long days will speed up the process. Produ it actually cuts it by about two, day, two weeks. So by using fluorescent or HID lights, um, most growers avoid incandescent because that causes a stretch in this particular crop. So that, it's that phytochrome balance will cause a stretch. Here's a crop schedule. Um, September 1, germinate our seeds. September 10th, grow the seedlings out. October 1, three to five weeks later, we're going to transplant to three inch. Another month, we're going to transplant to five to six. Lower the temperature to get your vernalization period. And here's your crop is ready to go 
for your uh, late winter, early spring season. It's a very popular plant. You'll see this around Easter, Mother's Day um, type, type of the year, time of the year. Um, but again, since it's not a like an Easter lily, we're not going after that one target market, but it's a very inexpensive plant to grow as far as greenhouse environment, not a lot of fuel investment. It's a good way to generate some, some income prior to your bedding plant season.